I'm Shoestring Jay and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things thrifty, frugal and money saving. So today I thought I would have a look at five frugal things I've done this week. I like to do this periodically just to kind of have a catch up really with myself more than anything else about the little things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis that save a lot of money. And, you know, it's that time of year. Everything's so... Well, everything isn't necessarily so expensive, but you are so tempted to spend money. And with us, as I've said before in other videos, I'm sure, you know, we've had a lot of expense because we've moved house and moving house is not frugal. I'm very glad we did it. I don't have any regrets, but it's just very expensive. So it's going to take a few months to catch up with ourselves. Plus it's Christmas. Plus we are in a cost of living crisis that we've never known before, never experienced anything like it since I was a child and it didn't affect me then in the 70s. So I'm always very frugal, but I am having to find ways to be even more frugal and just, you know, really, really be on the ball. So doing these kind of summaries of five frugal things I've done this week really helps me. So hopefully some of my ideas will help you. I'm going to begin with, with one that's kind of based around mindset. I don't know about you, but what I find is when I start spending, it's like something is unleashed. And I, I once I start, it becomes a lot easier to keep spending. So I think this is why with me and other people have said this too, that when you do a no spend period, so maybe you do a no spend week or a no spend month, it's really good for your finances longer than that period because you get into a really frugal mindset you start questioning every single purchase that you make and I'm not saying that you need to do this if you've got lots of money why would you you know if I had lots of money I wouldn't question every purchase and I'd certainly buy more things that I wanted but when you are on a limited income or when you're finding times tough or you know all of the price increases on food and mortgages and fuel and all of those things to help you to deal with those kind of things that getting into a frugal mindset can be really, really helpful. And so what I found is because I've been buying Christmas presents and I have budgeted for those. So, you know, that's not taken a chunk out of my finances, but I've kind of unleashed this need to spend. So last night I was looking at Vinted and I was looking at some lovely Aaron cardigans, um, really lovely. I come up with a big chunk. I thought I need I need another warm jumper. I was feeling really cold yesterday afternoon. Um, maybe that's what kind of kicked it off. So in my head, I'm saying I need another warm jumper. And I was looking on Vinted and they had some lovely ones on there. And the one I was looking at was, it was secondhand, but it was a Woolovers one. And it was about, I think it was £35. But then I stopped myself because I was thinking, you know, I don't need this. I recently bought a wool over really big, long blue Aaron one, which is absolutely gorgeous, which I spent about that much money on, about £35. So I really don't need one. I also have this old vintage Aaron. It's a men's jumper that I picked up. I can't remember, in the Pound charity shop, I think. Um, and it's only acrylic, but it's an Aaron one. And it's really, really warm. And, you know, most of the time I'm sitting at home, it's not like I have to dress up to go anywhere. And I just thought, well, what am I doing? I've got jumpers. I have quite a lot of jumpers. I do not need to spend £35 at this stage of the year on a cardigan when I can get by without it. So it's just making do with what I had. And the other thing I was very tempted by this week, because we had the Black Friday sales, um, we would, it's very hilly around here. And we were saying the other day when we were dog walking, oh, this one might get a bit slippy in the winter, this hill. We're going to have to be careful what footwear we wear. And I've got a pair of really old but fantastically comfortable waterproof boots that I wear all the time for dog walking and have done for about three years. They were actually second hand. They cost me about two pounds from a boot sale, I think. And I didn't wear them. I've had them longer than Archie, let's put it that way, because I didn't wear them much to start with. And then I got Archie and realised just how brilliantly warm and lovely they were for dog walking. I didn't care at that price whether they got a bit ruined with mud. I've actually managed to wash them a few times, dry them, and we re-waterproof them as well. So, so they were Raker ones. They're quite a good brand to start with, but they don't have a lot of grip. Um, and so I was thinking, oh, I need to get some walking shoes or some walking boots with some good grip. And I was looking at the Black Friday sales and thinking, yeah, I need to get those. And then I thought, no, 
just put your wellies on because my wellies, I've been wearing my wellies a lot because it's been so wet and they have really good grip on them and I just thought that's just crazy. I've got welly socks as well to keep my feet cosy. So I thought, no, you do not need these at this point in time. Wait until your finances are in a bit of a better shape. You can get by without them. Don't buy them. So I think what it is, is that you generally, once you start questioning your purchases, you get much better at it. And I'm normally really quite good, but you know, I'm also human. And sometimes I think I need this, I need this. And my little inner spoiled brat says, why can't I have this? I want to have it. But I took myself out of it. And honestly, I definitely, definitely did not need those two items. It would have been nice, but you know, I actually have a cupboard full of jumpers. Really, I did not need it. And yes, I would like some decent walking boots, but I am going to wait. I will wait until maybe the end of the winter when they are going cheaper. That's a good time to buy things out of season. So that is the first of the frugal things I've done this week. Just trying to be get a better mindset and stop myself from impulsively spending money that I don't have. And the second one is also, I have been spending money, as I said, on Christmas presents, is to remember to use top cash back before I make any purchases. So um, I bought, I had to buy some vouchers for my niece and nephew. So one of them wanted ASOS, one of them wanted um, super dry. So I thought, well, before I buy those, I am going to go onto Top Cash Back and see if I can get cash back on those purchases. I knew I would be able to on ASOS because I've bought from there before. They always seem to, someone seems to be asking me for ASOS vouchers. So um, I knew I could. And I found that there was quite a good, I think it was about 7% on ASOS vouchers. So that was actually a good cash back. It was only about 2% on super dry, but every little helps. And so I haven't bought an awful lot online. Um, but every single purchase that I make, I will make sure I go on to Top Cashback or Quidco is the other one um, and make, and get money off. Because why wouldn't you? You're buying online anyway. You may as well. Not everybody is on there, not every retailer, but an awful lot of them are. So it's really worth checking it out. So that was the next frugal thing I did. And then this morning I went out with Archie. I got caught in the rain. My hair is already a mess. It desperately needs cutting. Um, and I was thinking, oh, I'll wait till after Christmas. But actually, I don't think I can wait till after Christmas. It really does need cutting. I've hacked at the fringe myself. Um, I have tried cutting my own hair before and I didn't do a terrible job. During COVID, I did it particularly. I did all the layers and everything. My hairdresser said, actually, of all of the hair DIY haircuts I've seen, yours is the best. However, it does look better when it's done by a professional. Um, however, I thought, no, I'm not going to do that before Christmas. I can't afford to spend maybe £30, £35 on a cut and blow dry. But I have done the local beauty institute, Hair and Beauty Institute. Many times I've been there. Not very much recently. I thought, well, that's this is the time. So I called them. They do a cut and blow dry for £7.50. £7.50. Isn't that mental? So I have booked a cut and blow dry in a couple of weeks. You have to book ahead because they get booked up for um it will be before christmas anyway so i'll get a cut and blow dry and before you think oh no that'll be terrible letting a student loose on my hair the level three students they've already done a good year if not longer actually of their hair and beauty course and they know what they're doing they have a tutor there they come and check all the time they're always getting their tutor to check sometimes the tutor will give them some hints and tips or you can have a discussion about how you might like things changed if I had a very complicated haircut like perhaps a really short haircut or a, a blunt bob or something like that I probably wouldn't do it but mine is just it's just got a few layers in it and that's it it's a very simple haircut so for me it's well worth doing it so that is booked this morning so that's the third of my five frugal things that I've done this week and my next frugal thing involves pulling really good usable things out of a skip nearby. So we found this beautiful china in a skip in a house down the road. I'll show you it in a moment. The, the builder, well, it was actually a guy that had bought the house, he told us from, um, he knew the previous owners and he knew that they had a pottery import business, importing pottery from Greece in the 1990s so it's a vintage pottery hall it's really lovely he was quite happy for us to take it he's, he'd actually pulled out the china and not dumped it in the skip with the other stuff because he was hoping somebody would take it so we took all of it and cleaned it up and I'll, let me show you some of it it's really beautiful 
This vase was the first thing that I noticed. This was by the side of the box. And I thought, oh, wow, that's amazing. And it's just lovely. It's, a, it's got fish on it. It's very Mediterranean looking. And then this is just some of the rest of it. This is just the stuff that so far I have managed to clean up. There's still a box full in the garage. I haven't got around to doing yet. Really lovely coffee cups and saucers. I've got the saucers for those. That's a nice olive bowl. That would be really good for olives, I think. But some of these big plates, there's a really big bowl that I'm going to keep for salad. Some of these lovely little espresso mugs and there are saucers as well. I've got to work out which saucers I've got. And then these lovely little bowls. Aren't they really lovely? I'm so pleased that I managed to save them. And there are a lot of spare saucers. I thought what I'd use those for is to put underneath some of my house plants because as you can see, I have a lot of house plants i have them all around the place i like them so um yeah so that's what i'm gonna do isn't it just so good i'm so pleased that i stopped those going to the tip that would have been tragic the last frugal thing is soup making using up what we had in the freezer so i've got some courgettes that we grew in our last house actually <laughs> Bought them with us. I took them to Justin's mum's freezer first. Same with the tomatoes. They were all out of our greenhouse. There were too many of them and I wasn't just going to waste them. So I'm going to make courgette and tomato soup. I've got some celery that needs using up and some carrots as well. So they're also going to go in. So I'm going to, it's been going to be a kind of chuck it all in, hope for the best soup, which then I can use for the next several days to have lunches. So bring in some onions. garlic as well and some celery one of my nice new fish bowls <laughs> I'm just going to brown that off a bit Now I'm adding some roughly chopped potatoes, which I haven't bothered peeling, and some carrots, which I did peel because they looked a bit sad. They really do need easier. I'm just going to fry all of those off for a bit. So if you don't make a lot of soup, or you're a bit nervous about making it, don't be. It's the easiest thing in the world. I think if you start with a base of carrots, celery and onions and then you can put some potato in if you want them to get the soup to be a little thicker. You really can't go wrong no matter what you put on top of that, especially if you've got a good stock as well. So these tomatoes were from the greenhouse, as I said, from our last house. I don't bother doing anything with them. That's literally frozen whole as it is because I'm going to whiz this soup up so it's absolutely fine. So I've got a lot of tomatoes in there. It's going to be quite a full soup, I think. So it is full. It's going, to, it's going to come down a bit. Otherwise, I'll divide it up between two pans. And I've got all of the courgettes there. And so finally, I'm just going to put some good stock on top of it. I don't know if that's melted properly. Might need a little bit more stock on this, or more water anyway. But I'm going to worry about whether it's too thick a bit later. So I'm just going to get this up to the boil and just leave it for a bit. It won't take that long to cook. And then I'll whiz it up, add some seasoning and have it for my lunch. Okay, so that's been bubbling away for a while. I think that's done now. So I'm going to turn it off and blend it up and see what it tastes like. Add some seasoning at this point as well. And I'm going to have a bowl of this in one of my lovely little cute salvaged bowls. Isn't it nice? Delicious. So I hope you enjoyed watching my five frugal things for the past week or past few days actually. And if you did, don't forget to give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'm gonna have a little taste of my nice soup 
I love this bowl. Isn't it lovely? So nice. Mm. It's steaming. It'll keep me warm. I got really cold yesterday, so this will keep me warm today. I'm going to go off and enjoy my soup, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.